Feckless usage is one of those things in flight training that is easily overlooked or misunderstood by both students and flight instructors. In this video, we're going to cover the practical application of checklists in general aviation using proven single pilot and crew resource management tactics. Here's how I teach pilots to use checklists. When flying as a single pilot, the method in which you use checklists depends on your phase of flight. There are three methods for checklist use. Read, do, brief, flow, and flow verify. More on those in a second. The FAA Airplane Flying Handbook states that at a minimum, the following prepared checklist should be used for the following phases of flight. Pre-flight inspection, before engine start, engine starting, before taxiing, before takeoff, after takeoff, cruise, descent, before landing, after landing, engine shutdown and securing. Each phase of flight has varying levels of workload. One phase of flight might be busier than another, requiring a different approach to how the checklist is used. For example, when the aircraft is not in motion, your attention is undivided, allowing you to treat the checklist like a do list, reading and doing each action step by step. However, the redo method is not usually appropriate while the airplane is in motion, especially if you lack an autopilot or copilot. When the aircraft is in motion, it is appropriate to use a flow of memory items to complete the critical tasks, then pull out the checklists afterwards to verify the completed actions when time permits. Even then, there are phases in flight where you won't have time to verify with the checklist after the flow, requiring you to brief the checklist beforehand instead. Before we get into which method to use, let me briefly explain some terms for the new guys. A flow is a memorized pattern where a pilot checks the cockpit configuration considers any configuration changes and takes them if needed. It's called a flow because it is fluid-like as the pilot flows seamlessly through the cockpit to set up the aircraft for success in a given phase of flight. Memory items are often taught in emergencies where a pilot is trained to quickly complete the memory items specified for the scenario once the situation is properly identified. However, for the sake of this video, we're defining memory items as the actions and tasks required for a specific phase of flight done from memory in a flow pattern. Basically, a flow is a pattern for checking the aircraft. Memory items are the tasks completed in the flow. Whether you use a checklist as a do list or in a flow pattern, you must read the checklist before or after to confirm that critical items are or have been completed. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, the three methods of using checklists. The three methods are the read do method, the brief flow method, and the flow verify method. Before I explain how each method works, you need to know why certain phrases of flight require different checklist methods. It depends entirely on busyness. That said, there are three levels of busyness you can experience when operating an aircraft. Not busy, anticipating being busy, and busy. Each level of busyness has a corresponding if-then statement that lines up your workload with the proper checklist procedure. If you're not busy, then read and do. If you're about to be busy, then brief and flow. If you're busy, then flow and verify. Make sense? Awesome. Here's how that applies to each phase of flight. The redo method is used in the following phases of flight. Pre-flight inspection, before engine starting, engine starting, before taxiing, before takeoff, and engine shutdown and securing. During these phases, you aren't rushed or experiencing a heavy workload. The airplane is not in motion. The proper procedure in this case is to read the checklist, then do what it says. Reading the checklist and doing the tasks is also important for overcoming complacency. When is it proper to use the brief flow method? You're probably about to take off or are approaching the airport to land. You might be sipping your coffee now, but in just a few moments, you'll be busy flying the airplane and getting it configured for the next phase of flight. Your best bet is to figure out what needs to be done ahead of time. Pilots need to use the brief flow method during the taxi, after takeoff, and before landing phases. These are times when you won't have time to read the checklist afterwards unless you have a co-pilot. Even then, it is appropriate to brief yourself before the phase takes place, leaving you fully prepared for that busy phase that is approaching quickly. These are phases where busyness is fully anticipated. Anticipating busyness is all about staying ahead of the aircraft. Get as much stuff done now as you can so that you won't be overloaded and distracted down the road. A great example of when you should brief then flow is when you're approaching the airport before landing. The before before landing checklist should be brief several miles from the traffic pattern, then the flow completed on the downwind leg. It's usually a bad idea to pull out the checklist in the pattern. Unless you have a co-pilot, you're going to be too busy flying the aircraft. One of my favorite pro tips is to do what Piper does in many other airplanes. Stick a small before landing checklist on your panel in plain sight. It makes it super easy to glance at it in the pattern if needed. Another good example of the brief flow method is a takeoff and climb. It's a good idea to brief your takeoff and climb before you enter the runway, doing the proper flows once airborne and verifying with the checklist whenever you have time.
time during a less busy part of the climb out. When is it proper to use the flow verify method? The flow verify method is used when you're busy and experiencing a high workload with time critical tasks. Time is of the essence, leaving no time to glance at the checklist first. Pilots use the flow verify method during climb, leveling off at cruise, descent and approach, and when dealing with emergencies. If you are busy, do a flow of your memory items, then verify afterwards with your checklist. It is critical to understand that you won't always have time to pull out the checklist after doing your flow. Consider the brief flow method in those cases. Remember to think ahead of the aircraft. You fly it, don't let it fly you. Got it? Good. Let's recap. For the pre-flight inspection, before engine starting, engine starting, before taxiing, before takeoff, and engine shutdown and securing phases, read and do. For the taxi, after takeoff, and before landing phases, brief and flow. During climb out, cruise, descent, approach, and emergencies, flow and verify. You can remember the if-then statements if you're not sure. If you're not busy, read the checklist and do the items. If you're about to be busy, brief the checklist items beforehand, then do the flow when it's time. If you're busy, do your flow first from memory, then verify with a checklist when time permits. Now, let's dig into operating in a crewed environment. You have a co-pilot. Great. Now what? When you're the only pilot, it can get pretty busy pretty quickly. Having a co-pilot to help out is really nice when they know what they're doing, but if they don't, it's a real mess. Professional flight decks have a written standard operating procedure that orchestrates every aspect of every flight. It dictates when the checklist will be performed, what the flows are, who does them, etc. Those professional pilots are literally on the same page. That's how you can run a large operation with thousands of humans and pair any of them together and get a safe and standard outcome. You should strive to have your own SOP when flying with another pilot. It doesn't need to be as in-depth or formal as the airlines, but be sure each crew member are familiar with roles and expectations. The number one rule when flying with the crew is to make sure that everyone is on the same page. We're gonna get into some of those basics now. In a two-pilot crew, you've got the pilot flying and the pilot monitoring. There are three critical points for using checklists with CRM in general aviation. The pilot flying duties, the pilot monitoring duties, and the challenge response method. Here's how it works. The pilot flying flies the airplane, does the flows on the ground, and calls for the checklists to be read. The pilot monitoring performs the flows in the air, reads the checklist when requested by the pilot flying, and assists with monitoring the flight and systems. The challenge response method is how the pilots read the checklist when it is used. That works like this. First, the pilot flying calls for the checklist. Then, the pilot monitoring responds by reading the checklist's title and each item, which is the challenge. Then, the pilot flying responds with the condition of the system, not just set or checked. Lastly, the pilot monitoring responds with the next item or the name of the checklist complete. Here's an example of what it can look like. The pilot flying calls for the checklist to start the process. Before landing checklist. Before landing checklist. Fuel selector. Fullest tank. Undercarriage. Down and locked. Mixture. Rich. Propeller. Full forward. Fuel pump. On. It's end belt. Locked and test. Before landing checklist complete. Of course, this is an oversimplified explanation of how checklists work in a crew. There are exceptions, especially during abnormal or emergency procedures. I'll cover a lot more on general aviation CRM in another video. For now, consider this example as the foundation for practical checklist application. That sums up how practical checklist application works in general aviation, both from a CRM standpoint and an SRM standpoint. This mindset behind checklists has helped me in my career, and I know it'll help you too. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.